So you meet someone and they're very magnetic and charming. They draw you in with their confidence and lofty dreams, making them even more attractive and even seductive. And you get caught up in this web that they're weaving. But one day you wake up and you realize that you're tangled in this web that's nothing more than a fantasy and a very costly fantasy for you. Hi everybody, this is God's Girl G. Thank you for joining me for another video today. And if you're not already subscribed, why don't you consider doing so? And while you're at it, if you hear something that you like during the time that you're viewing this video, why don't you click the thumbs up telling me that you like the video and putting some comments below. I read all my comments and I do try to respond to them accordingly. So let's get into today's video. The video today is all about a narcissistic personality type or being in relationship with someone who you may think could be a narcissist. Now this, this particular video is uh, very sensitive for me and I will tell you why. I actually was married to someone, my first husband, who actually exhibited this type of personality trait, because that's pretty much what it is. And um, so it's a very sensitive topic for me to talk about. Um, so, but my goal for sharing this information, I'm not gonna share my story, so to speak. I am gonna share the information. My goal is to help anyone that might be in a similar, whether it's marriage or relationship, um, that they can actually hear this information and make their own decision of what they should do next or how to get out of it. So let's start off by talking about what are some of the characteristics of someone who's a narcissist. Narcissism is characterized by an inflated sense of importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration, a lack of empathy for others, and they often have troubled relationships. Another way to sum up all of these characteristics is that they are extremely selfish at the expense of others. Plus, they have an inability to consider someone else's feelings at all. Now, when you're in a relationship with someone who is a narcissist, they will make you feel crazy uh, a lot. And while they have less of a tendency to leave physical wounds, the emotional and spiritual wounds from their abuse is very real. And as I stated, my first husband, he was narcissistic. He drew me into the web and before I knew it, I was entangled and I didn't even know if I was gonna be able to get out. And as I look back over that time, there were many signs that stood out. And I want to share some of these signs with you so that you don't have to go through what I've gone through. Sign number one, it starts as a fairy tale. They will take you out all the time, spend money, make you feel admired and beautiful. And they will make you feel that they are the only one that can appreciate you for who you are. So when you're first dating someone, you can be overwhelmed by how strong they pursue you. So you don't even think about it. Sign two, the tables turn. Now that they have you all drawn in with their compliments and everything else that make up this fairy tale, the tables turn and it becomes all about them. They're so busy talking about their self that they don't even listen to you. They're talking about their accomplishments and achievements with this grandiose type of story. They're so busy talking about their self that they won't even engage you in the conversation. They just, they just caught up in talking about themselves. Sign three, a narcissist will punish everyone around them for their own lack of self-confidence. Now, a narcissist can come off extremely confident, but it's this made up type of confidence that they're wanting you to believe that they have. They will use other people who usually have a lot of empathy to build up their own sense of self-worth and make them feel powerful. Their egos are so easily hurt, which increases their need for compliments. Sign four, they lack empathy. They don't handle emotions that belong to other people. Their inability to empathize and sympathize with others is the reason why their relationships usually just collapse. 
Because who's going to put up with that? And because of their lack of empathy, sign five is they usually don't have any long-term friends, if any at all. They may have some casual friends, but long-term friends, it, it's their lack of empathy that causes them to not have them. Now, because of the fact that they don't have many long-term friends, if you have some long-term friends, they may lash out at you when you wanna go hang out with your friends. Sign six, they constantly pick on you and you never do anything right. They will pass this off as you're just being overly sensitive and that they're just teasing. They'll put you down, they'll call you names and make jokes that really aren't funny. Their primary goal with this one is to lower your self-esteem so that they can increase their own, which makes them feel powerful. And listen, if they knock you down every time you do something that is worthy of celebration, get out, get out. This constant belittling and putting down is so that you are reminded that you're not better than them. Because after all, no one in the world is better than they are. Sign seven, they gaslight you. So I know I'm using a term that some of you may not understand, so let me break that down. In other words, they're gonna spew blatant lies, falsely accuse others, and spin the truth to distort reality. Phrases like, oh, you took that the wrong way, or I didn't say that, come to mind when someone is gaslighting you. Since a narcissist thrives on being worshiped, they have to use that type of a manipulation tactic to get you to do just that, worship them. So listen, you are powerless to change a narcissist. So you can fool yourself into thinking, well, if I can do this or that, like they said, they'll change and all will be right with the world, but it won't be enough. And the next thing you know, even if you make those changes, you'll look back and realize that you have completely lost yourself. Hear me you will never be enough for a narcissist because they are never enough for their self. So here's my advice to you. Know that your needs will not be met, fulfilled, or even recognized. Why? Because narcissists are not looking for partners. They're looking for obedient admirers. Look at how they treat others. If the narcissist lies, manipulates, hurts, and disrespects others, they will eventually treat you the same way. Take off the rose-colored glasses, please. Stop making excuses for them and flat out see them for who they are, not who you want them to be. Denial will not make things better. Focus on your own dreams. Instead of focusing on a narcissist's delusions, focus on the things you want for yourself. Don't buy into a narcissist's version of who you are. Remember, they don't live in reality. They live in their alternate version of reality. Don't let their insults undermine your self-esteem and refuse to accept undeserved responsibility, blame, or criticism. Don't argue with the narcissist. You won't win. Now, I understand when you are attacked, it is a natural defense to try to defend yourself and prove them wrong. But no matter how rational your argument, how embedded in truth, your reasoning is, they won't hear you. Don't waste your breath. And here's a tip. A narcissist loves an explosive reaction to something that they've said that's been like an insult. So when you don't respond, it ticks them off. Next, you need to know yourself. The best defense against the insults of a narcissist is having a strong sense of self. When you know yourself, it's easy to reject any unfair criticism leveled against you. You realize that you don't have to apologize for who you are. And my last piece of advice, let go of the need for approval. It's important to detach from the narcissist's opinion and any desire to please or appease them at the expense of yourself. Be okay with knowing the truth about yourself, even if the narcissist sees things differently, because they will. And if you find yourself with a narcissist, I want to give you some tips that will help you leave, if that's what you choose to do. Know that narcissism it is a form of abuse. And I think that sometimes, especially in the church community, we don't want to recognize 
anything that's not physical abuse as abuse. Narcissistic personality type is a form of abuse, period. So ending an abusive relationship is never easy. And ending a relationship with a narcissist is especially difficult because they can be so charming and charismatic and then be so cruel and deviant when you do things against what they want you to do. So here are my five tips if you wanna leave a narcissist. You need to write down why you're leaving. You need to write it down. You need to be clear on why you're ending the relationship because it can prevent you from getting sucked back in. Next, you need to have a well thought out plan of escape. And here's a personal tip here. It took me six months to plan my escape. Third, you need to seek support. And I recognize that a narcissist's goal is to damage relationships that you have with family and close friends. But this is the time to reach out to them and let them know what you're trying to do. Number four, don't make empty threats. In other words, if you say you're gonna leave and you tell them that you're gonna leave, you need to follow through with that. Don't make it empty. It's just better to accept the tactic that the narcissist will not change. And when you're ready, leave. And my fifth tip, please listen to this. Seek immediate help if you're physically threatened or abused. Call 911 or any local authority that can assist you. So here's a warning. Leaving a narcissist can be a huge blow to their ego and their sense of entitlement and self-importance. Remember, their huge ego still needs to be fed. So they'll often try to continue to exert control over you and love bomb you. And if love bombing doesn't work, they will resort to threats. Those threats can be degrading you in front of family and friends or stalking you on social media or in person. It is important that you cut off all ties with a narcissist. Allow yourself to grieve over the relationship, but don't expect the narcissist to share your grief. And my final comment, the sooner that you realize that the person that you're dating, seeing or whatever displays these characteristics which are narcissistic, you can leave and lessen the damage that they do to your overall self-worth. Thanks for joining me today. Till next time. Bye.